Hello everyone and welcome back to Beef Reacts. Today. Today we're checking out a death battle. We're checking out the death battle of Cole McGarth versus Alex Mercer. Excuse me. I'm stuffy. I don't I'm not sick, but I'm not healthy. It's a weird spot to be in. So somehow <coughs> excuse me. Talking's not fun. Um, being overly expressive and it's hard to breathe. I shouldn't be making content today. But for you at home. Hi. I am. I shaved. I um, put my contacts in and I am moderately attractive again. I'm not attractive from the chest down, but from the chest up, I've been told I'm a fairly handsome fellow. But, the fuck do I know? Not much. Let's jump into it. We're being sponsored by HelloFresh. Well, they are. I'm not. I could be. I won't. That's a lie. I can't. I'm nowhere near the size I should be. Note of Death Battle is sponsored by HelloFresh and Shady Rays. Fuck you. Not the brands, please. I want money. Cole McGrath, the patron saint of infamous. What do you mean, patron saint of Infamous? First off, Infamous 1 was such a fun fucking game, and then everyone copied it. Alex Mercer, the Blacklight Virus prototype from Prototype. That's right, champions. You voted for it, so we're finally doing it. Long after the- Infamous 1, dope. Infamous 2, mid. Infamous Second Son, dope. These characters were ever relevant. Oh, hey, look what I found in the trash. An old script we wrote for this very matchup way back in 2013. Wait, we haven't emptied our trash in 10 years? He's Wiz and I'm That's about right. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Cole. The answer is Cole. He's a fucking energy vampire. Duh. With great power comes great responsibility. Tommy McGuire's not the only superhero who's had to learn that lesson. Cole McGrath was just your average delivery boy in Empire City until one day he opened a package that exploded in his face. This was the bioterrorism, a device that, upon erupting, destroyed much of the city and tore through Cole at the atomic level, killing him instantly. Now Cole's stories changes based on the player's choice. For this matchup, we're focusing on the canonical good Cole while alternatively exploring the possible effects of evil cold. Actually, he scooped up some superpowers. Cool, zippity zappity superpowers. This game by itself made me want to have electricity superpowers to the point of I looked up electrokinesis and I found one of those websites that claimed that if you just tried really fucking hard, you could do it. And I truly... Guys, I was like maybe eight or ten. But I really tried to become psychic, and I still do some of the exercises today, just just to see. I'll I'll be like, Shh. and if my monitor goes wonky, that'd be fucking cool. But it doesn't. So, more specifically, Cole Jerry's out. A conduit, one of many beings who are granted supernatural abilities from the Ray Sphere explosion, which also turned empires. Full name: Cole McGarth. McGrath, twenty-seven. Why the fuck am I getting so close to people's ages? Electric man, savior of Empire City, patron saint of New Marius, a prime conduit, knows how to hardcore, hardcore, facts, quit college to piss off his parents, Red Bram, Silkers, Dracula, like all of the cool kids. City into a godforsaken hellscape. This world needed a hero, or at least an anti-hero willing to clean up the mess he sort of technically made. Cole put his powers to the test, battling rogue superpowered conduits, including the mastermind behind the blast, Kessler. Let's be real, none of Cole's powers are as sick nasty as his parkour skills. But Facts. his ability to manipulate electricity is pretty sweet too. Cole controls electromagnetic energy. Not only can he generate a smorgasbord of powerful lightning attacks, he can also oh, that manipulate looks sick. thermal, kinetic, and gravitational energies. Electrokinesis, arc lightning, bio, leech, blasts, bolts, grenades, gigawatt blades, gigawatt drain, induction grind, Karmic Overload, Lightning Tether, Radar Pulse, Rockets, Static Thrusters, and Thunder Drop. And we're not even touching half the shit. Electromagnetism is pretty broad, after all. This includes his Radar Pulse, which detects the bioelectricity inside organisms, even if they're hidden or transformed. And for good measure, he... 
Oh, freezes rocket, frost shield, ice grenades, ice at launch, ionic freeze, ionic storm, and ionic vortex. Get some ice powers to his kid. He can throw ice grenades, shoot ice spikes, and let out some epic ice farts. <laughs> huh? He can levitate like Electric Iron Man, grind on rails like Shadow the Hedgehog, read your mind like Goku's muffin button, charge up with extra karmic with energy, it. also like Shadow the Hedgehog, and generate force fields like Shadow the Hedgehog. But these aren't just force fields. They literally convert any matter they touch into energy that coal absorbs that's insane how's that are you familiar with a little equation called e equals mc squared no yeah oh well uh, it yeah it's the fundamental thing of relativity it's where most quantum physics bases itself yeah i i'm aware of what it is Wiz. you don't gotta tell me but, you know, just to refresh your course. ...finds the mathematical relationship between matter and energy. Essentially, how much energy any given mass contains. Okay, the largest mass object coal absorbs is a 343-gram helicopter chain gun round. Perfectly converting matter to energy is technically impossible, but hey, this is a video game. The mass contained in that bullet, when multiplied by the speed of light squared, would release an energy equivalent to over 7 megatons of TNT. This means coal's energy output is basically fueled by a nuclear reactor. Oh! So he's like a living super bomb, always ready to go off. Sounds like my first ex-wave. Should he somehow nope. run low on energy, he can drain it from nearby appliances to recharge. He's even learned to drain the bioelectricity from people, like this. Yikes. Goal can focus his electricity. Amp melee weapon designed by Zeke Dunbar, channels Cole's power, ray field inhibitor, small portable device designed by Dr. Se Sebastian Wolf. Amplifies coal power level, inhibits ray field energy. A giant tuning fork which lets him ring around the rosy you to death. Or he can just make lightsabers out of his hands. That's Dope. cool too. And because he follows Pokemon rules, Cole's extra resistant to electric attacks. With these powers, Cole chewed through Kessler's forces, including Sasha, whose black tar powers could infect and control minds. And he eventually faced down that son of a bitch himself and pwned his ass, despite Kessler having his exact same powers. Coincidence? Turns out the architect of Cole's misery was himself from an alternate future timeline. I completely fucking forgot that he was himself. I remember being, I remember even at 10, I thought that was fucking stupid. Manipulating events from the shadows to ensure this version of Cole became a better hero than Kessler ever was. Yeah, you see, Cole's superpowers are molded through his actions, increasing in power and utility based on how good or evil he acts. Naturally, as a good person, Cole shaped his powers to be more focused to target the bad guys. That pussy shit! Evil Cole is way more awesome, sus! He throws everything up! Collateral damage? Who cares? He can control fire! Yep. Once again, Boomstick speaking fucking facts. Running it out. Well, that just happened. Uh, who wrote this shit? The point is, Kessler's whole plan was meant to prevent the apocalypse, which would appear in the form of the Beast, a conduit of unimaginable power. Cole is strong enough to create massive thunderstorms, fast enough to route electricity moving- For context, electricity moves at approximately 90% the speed of light when traveling through a wire. Oh! At 90% the speed of light, and maybe thanks to Kessler, tough enough to take on the beast. Which possessed the power- Survived the ray sphere of blast, resisted Sasha's mental control, saved new Marius from destruction, ice attacks can reach sub-zero temperatures, split an aircraft carrier in half with a lightning strike, survived David Warner absorbing his neuroelectricity. Defeated Sasha, Alden, Kessler, Bertrand, Kuo, and the beast. Or of the ray sphere itself. It could regenerate at an atomic level and eradicate all of Empire City in a single attack. Fortunately, after a grueling battle, Cole defeated the Beast once and for all. Though ultimately, it wasn't Cole's power that made him a hero. In order to stop a plague created by the Ray Sphere, Cole sacrificed his life, eradicating the conduit genes and saving all of humanity. Sure, he also killed thousands of conduits in the process, but hey, what's a few corpses when building a better tomorrow? This trolley stops for no one. L. Cole was remembered as a saint by the people of Numeray, as a hero by the friends he left behind and an inspiration to future generations a true testament to the responsibility of power yeah i i think he's gonna alex mercer i don't even think is a good guy i'm pretty sure he's insane i think alex mercer may end up clapping cole this episode of death battle is sponsored by health battle really has new travel 50 battle for first 
With great power comes great responsibility. Why the fuck do you keep quoting Spider-Man like I don't- Don't cite the fucking sources to me. I was there when they were written. But not everybody's got an Uncle Ben to tell him that. Alex Mercer yeah. woke up in hell. Manhattan Island was gripped by the horrific black light virus. Transform Wait a minute. Is Prototype based on a comic? I had no fucking idea. I've never played Prototype. I just watched the walkthrough of it when I was like... 12. Forming its citizens into terrifying monsters. Alex had no memories. He was 30, 510, codenamed Zeus, the Alpha Viralis Metamorph. Official traits, distant, predatory, super intelligent, terrifying, vengeful. Admits he is a killer, a monster, a terrorist because he's just so edgy. He was a man without a past and maybe no future, but he did have one thing. The black light virus can rewrite your cells all the way down to your DNA. And somehow it granted Alex incredible superhuman abilities. He can infect anyone he touches with this virus, altering their biology at the molecular level in seconds and giving him complete control over their actions. So Alex pushed on, desperate to avenge himself and the city by finding whatever monster unleashed this nightmare. And eat them. Yeah, he can consume people to give himself a power boost. He's like Kirby, if Kirby listened to Linkin Park. So this awesome. This extra biomass gives him superhuman strength, a greater metabolic rate, increased reaction times, and even a regenerative healing factor. Essentially, Alex is an ever-evolving super being, the ultimate being. Oh, oh, like Shadow the Hedgehog. By consuming victims. Why the fuck is everyone Shadow the Hedgehog? I can't tell if this was actually written in 2013. Or if this is just how it is. I really can't tell. And I don't know if that's a testament to how good they are. Or just how... I, I don't know. Alex also receives all their memories and experiences, including L. Peter Randall, a 69-year-old man whose entire history Alex processed in just 11 seconds. Being able to condense that much information into that time frame means Alex can perceive events happening within 5 nanoseconds. Which is about how long I was married to my second ex-wife. Alex can shapeshift his body Ow. at will, creating disguises, increasing his muscle mass, and forming nearly unbreakable armor. Infections transforms victims into infected, consume, condense, alters matter of victim. Reactive evolution, resistance, radiation, fire, electricity, etc. Oh, he's res he's resistant to electricity, the thing he's fighting against. Dope. Biomass, shape sifting, claws, whiplash, shield, hammer, fist, blade, tree. Muscle mass and tendrils. And when he wants to kill someone, he can become his own weapon, turning his limbs into claws and blades, or generating countless tendrils that give him unmatched control over his environment. With these goopy powers, he Oh, he has more. Air dash, adrenaline surge, disguise, glide, regeneration, hive mind, sensory powers, thermal vision, infected vision, hunting, critical mass, tendril barrage, devastator, ground spike, graveyard, devastator, critical pain, devastator, Evolved form greatly increased power and size. They're fucked. Bunch of Street Fighter moves like the air dash, the cannonball, the bullet dive drop, and the hunter dirt nap. Pretty sure that was my third ex wife's boyfriend's stripper name. And after consuming enough people, Alex reaches yeah. critical mass. From a gameplay perspective, Alex's health can be viewed as a representation of his biomass reserves and increases when he consumes and decreases when he performs a devastator attack. And can unleash his evil slop in powerful ultimate attacks. Like the With Tendril it. Barrage Devastator. Oh, it's beautiful. Despite being seen as the world's most wanted terrorist, fair, Alex used his powers to stop the spread of the virus and end the city's nuclear devastation. It was then he learned the truth. He wasn't Alex Mercer at all. He was the black light virus itself, which absorbed the memories and likeness of the real Alex Mercer, who was not only dead, but actually responsible for all of this in the first place. To decipher this, I recreated the black light virus myself, the most dangerous... Oh. Uh, why is it empty? He's right behind me, isn't he? So the man Alex was hunting the whole time was himself. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. That's right, Boomstick. Turns out Dr. Alex Mercer helped create the black light virus. And when things didn't work out and he was about to die, he recklessly unleashed it upon the city. What a petty SOB. What he didn't know was that the virus would merge with his sentience and memories and become a new Alex. How? Why? 
Don't question it, it's a nothing burger. But is this mass of viral material that calls itself Alex actually human in any meaningful way? The poor no. bastard sure tried to be. Too bad humans can be dicks and everyone kept betraying him. Even the so-called love of his life who shot him in the face. Whoa. So Alex figured, uh, obviously, humanity had to go. Not just go, but be made better. Whatever goodness oh. remaining with this Alex was left behind as he plotted to unleash a second black light virus recreating humanity into a super species in his own image great power became great terror classic anime rpg villain stuff and he was strong enough to do it alex can casually yeah. tear buildings apart dodge supersonic tank shells and even defeated the supreme hunter who was tough enough to survive a nuclear blast that would have leveled manhattan based on estimated made by non black watch characters claims the blast shield equaled about 75 kilotons of TNT. Black Watch's own map of a blast radius takes the precedence. Blast radius given in game, that's 450 kilotons of TNT. Speaking of nukes, Alex survived one. His healing factor is off the chain. And after being blasted into paste, all he needed was the tiniest bit of himself to come back good as new. His healing occurs at the cellular level. Saved Manhattan, then terrorized Manhattan, casually tossed tanks and helicopters, regenerated after tanking a nuclear blast, processed absorbed memories at 66% light speed, absorbed the skills of thousands of consumed soldiers, defeated Robert Cross, Elizabeth Green, Peter Randall, and Supreme Hunter. virtually impossible to kill so long as he keeps consuming. But attempting to take over the world and kill millions of people pissed off a certain James Heller, a dude who had just had enough of his fucking weird fucking rambling shit who used the same virus powers to consume Alex once and for all live by the Kirby symbiote die by the Kirby symbiote but with it was Alex just a virus after all I mean what's more human than the urge to conquer the world drive its species to the slaughter consume its raw genetic resources and crown yourself king yes day, Alex. yes he's a fucking conqueror Sorry. Mercer died was the day he truly became human. Wow, that was intense. F yeah, it was. And it was awesome. This episode's. Ah, uh, fuck you. All right, the combatants are. I think Alex Mercer wins, but I want Cole to win. Set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! I like Cole more, but I, I just think Alex Mercer wins. More ruthless, more versatile, better arsenal. Oh. Weird. I think the animations are kind of nice buddy you are one sick freak all right first off music goes hard He's kicking ass, but there's got to be a reversal coming soon. Yeah, I don't like this. Yeah, this seems like it's going to be a problem. I can't get over how hard the music goes though, like high key it, it, it slaps. I 
I just, I don't think Cole wins it, and I want him to. And it's, like, weird because he's technically... Excuse me. He's technically, like, winning? But it's, like, it doesn't really feel like he is. I don't know. And yet you wasted on these vermin. You and I can change this world for the better. The only vermin I see here is you. Like I said, he's resistant to electricity. Oh. Oh, it's just going hard. Oh, it's sick. Idea. Excuse me? This world sure isn't perfect. But it's a lot better without you in it, asshole. With it? I'm with the wind, but... Meh? Oh, now I know where that script was in the trash. I had to hear someone say awesome sauce. <laughs> both opponents were incredibly versatile and deadly, and both could match each other's powers blow for blow. They could each create weapons, amplify their strength, and fight at range. But could Cole survive Alex's infection? Well, Alex would usually need to weaken an opponent to get that trick to work. Even then, the Ray Sphere incident that- While the Ray Sphere creates conduits, Kessler was unsure if Cole would survive its explosion. As stated in the mission, the truth, the beast was torn apart by a race fear, so Cole survived survival accounts of his own ability. That created Cole's powers in the first place ripped apart everyone else down to the atomic level, and the beast's attacks were capable of the same thing. Considering the blacklight virus only works down to molecular DNA, it's reasonable to say Cole would be able to resist it. Sure, Alex could have potentially- Cole's bio leech drains narrow electricity from living things, which is partly responsible for healing the human body from wounds. Likely, it is likely it could negate Alex's could regeneration. Cole's biomass to give himself an edge, but Cole could just do the same thing to Alex, absorbing his bioelectricity to power himself back up. But nothing could challenge the- more powerful, better ranged options could resist the black light violence radar sense in count counters Alex's disguises, vulnerable to possible corruption, smarter and more experienced, harder to kill due to regeneration, notably Captain slower. Power. Everything Alex survived could simply not match Cole's force fields, and especially not the power of the beast. The blast the beast created actually had a much wider radius than the one the Supreme Hunter could survive. To compete with these foes, this means Cole was simply far more powerful than Alex. Speaking of the beast, Cole's ability to disintegrate it at the atomic level meant that even Alex's crazy molecular regeneration couldn't stand up to Cole's might. Just like how Cole could over- Sasha's organic tar controls minds and physically alters its victim. This is curiously similar to the backlight virus. Cole not only resisted the tar, but healed people affected Howard by it. Kessler, yeah. despite his resistance to electricity, or how he resisted Sasha's mind control powers, which were eerily similar to the Blacklight virus. But I bet you're wondering, what if Alex fought evil Cole instead? Well, it'd be even worse, because that Cole took the beast's power for himself. That's good night for Angry Virus Boy. Alex was a versatile, deadly opponent, but Cole's counters, speed, and raw power gave him the edge. Alex got the Cole shoulder, just like this stupid script why didn't they just update the script the winner is cole mcgrath with it but like thanks for what all right question of the day is what early 2000 not early what late <clears throat> no mid 20 aughts or early 2010s game did you fuck with the most i would say infamous or batman arkham city were my two big ones second question or second thing is, I hope all of you enjoyed today's uh, video. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you don't mind, just like, comment, share, subscribe. I post every single day. I hope all of you have a good one, and peace out.